Goldman's chief economist Jan Hatzius joins us this morning, who was looking for a little bit more than uh, 1.1 million. Uh, pretty good call there, Jan. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, doing well. Um, I'm wondering if you see any hair on this print and uh, to what degree education might have affected the overall number? Well, I don't really see any negatives in the report. I think both the establishment survey, the payroll number, and the household survey were very firm. And of course, we did get a sizable boost from, from education. There are some seasonal adjustment distortions in that, but that was pretty well known coming in. And that was one reason why we and, and others had, uh, had, a, had a very strong expectation going in. But I also think we're seeing very substantial amount of underlying job growth in really across the different measures and that uh, you know gets us closer to the sort of levels that I think the Fed's going to be looking for later in the year for for a taper announcement. Right. I'll get to the timing on that in a moment. I guess the, the, the broader question is whether or not you're sensing momentum in the job market. Uh, if 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 another say close to a million plus print is possible for August and whether or not labor force is going to be ready to meet that. I mean, I think August, my, my working expectation would be that it's not as strong as this one in terms of the headline number, because I don't think you're going to have the same kind of seasonal tailwind. Again, coming back to the education category, that's not going to give us another boost. But I think we will see over the next several months, August, September, October, we'll see some further very solid numbers, you know, maybe in this range, maybe a little bit below this. But I, I do think that there is still room for employment and leisure and hospitality to, to come back and in a number of other categories. On labor supply, you know, I do think labor supply is at the margin improving. And that's partly because the, the virus is having less of an impact. And we're assuming and, and expecting that the Delta impact is going to be relatively limited. And it's partly also because the expiration of the top-up unemployment benefits probably is also going to stimulate some labor supply. Jan, how much of the changes in the labor market are maybe perhaps more permanent, more structural? I, I ask that just because, I mean, and we could say this even before the pandemic, labor force participation rate uh, has been an issue for quite a number of years. We were just having this conversation with Steve Leesman earlier in the show uh, about women that have just left the workforce altogether. How many of those folks, what is it going to take for them to actually come back and seek a job in a more meaningful way right now? I mean, I think a lot of it is going to be the, the short run kind of impediments or maybe, you know, obstacles to, to, to coming back. So I think there's still worry about the virus. I don't think that's going to, you know, go away entirely. But over time, I, I would expect that to become less of a factor. Schooling is a factor, and I think that's uh, going to be less less of an issue once you get into the fall and schooling resumes, you know, basically in person. And then and then there is the the disincentive effects from uh, fr from the benefits. I think the longer term questions, uh, yeah, there is some some question. I think whether we get exactly back to the levels of participation that we had pre-pandemic. I think we'll get relatively close, but it certainly could be that it takes a while to get back to those to those levels. So if people have pulled forward retirement, for example, then they're not going to unretire. However, that then also front loads some retirements that otherwise would have taken place in the in the next year or two. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's literally a permanent hit to labor force participation.